So by now I'm sure you've heard of or seen with your own eyes the recent Northern Lights. Um, pretty phenomenal thing to see in person. Most people don't get to. Um, however, there's some unusual things going on that uh, not a lot of discussion seems to be happening um, in the science community, um, at least not in the mainstream. Um, I think if you talk to anybody in the know in this field, will tell you that we should not have seen the Northern Lights as far south as we did. Um, so the question is why? Uh, these last solar storms or solar flares that, uh, sorry guys, the gnats are bad out here, uh, but these, these last few storms that have hit the earth aren't as big as anything we haven't had in, in the last hundred years. Um, actually substantially smaller. Um, and we've never had the Northern Lights reach down this far south. So that kind of leaves one of two options. Um, either our electromagnetic field is weakening, which they say it is. Um, it's up to 20% weaker today than it was the turn of the century. That's a pretty substantial decrease. Um, and that is our shield that protects us against these, these types of events from the sun. Um, so if that's the case, not a good thing. <laughs> Um, the next one that hits could be a lot worse. Um, but I did find it interesting that there was a release <coughs> that NASA was doing some, uh, or the HARP program was working on some uh, projects on the 11th to basically create artificial auroras in the sky. Um, and this is a straight up um, official release from NASA. Now, is that just a mere coincidence? that days before this event, they're doing this type of testing to supposedly create artificial northern lights or ionize the atmosphere. Um, <clears throat> if that's the case, then yeah, it's pretty alarming. However, if you, uh, if you look on the, uh, so the satellite that watches the sun, they have a, a specific space satellite whose own job, this, this telescope, is to watch the sun. It parks and it watches the sun 24-7, nonstop. If you look seconds before this event, as, it's, as it appears, as they've released it to the public, um, the camera on that telescope starts shaking just like three, four seconds before the event. And maybe people wouldn't think there's much to that, but you gotta understand this space telescope is in space. It does not move. Certainly not like, like it appears to on a camera. It's really shaky. The whole image is shaky. Um, and that's not normal. And it happened just seconds before the, the CME released, which that alone, if, if this is just a benign you know, incident with the camera, the chances of it happening right before are very, very slim. So uh, that's another question you gotta ask, what's going on, is there some trickery going on? Um, it's, it's hard to say, guys, but either way, uh, I don't think it's a good situation. Um, either they're lying to us and they're performing some unknown experiments on the atmosphere for what known reasons, I couldn't tell you, I can only speculate, or our electromagnetic field is actually weakening to a point where these small solar events are going to start having a much bigger impact um, and that's scary in the world we live in today guys because let's face it everything that our society is based on our civilization based now is is digital um, we have in the last century made a transition it wasn't overnight but it was you know steady and we're so ingrained with it in our lives that um, a major event like the Carrington event happens today, it would be a bad deal, really bad deal. Um, there's not a lot of discussion. I don't. I mean, I, I, they're beautiful. I love seeing them, um, and I, I think it's pretty phenomenal. But at the same time, it, it should serve as a warning. What's what's going on? Because um, we should not have seen those those northern lights as far south, based on the size of those. Um, solar events so something's going on it'd be nice to see a little bit more discussion in the science community about it um, certainly don't hear anything in the media um, so yeah maybe uh, people will start pricking their ears and asking some more questions but uh, I don't think all is as it seems right now so I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is we should look at this as a warning um, 
it's beautiful, it, it really is, but at the same time, this should bring to the front of our minds the implications that the next next solar event could have, and it could be very drastic. So um, you have the chance, the opportunity now to prepare. Uh, I don't want to sound like a fear monger or a prepper, but I mean, who doesn't want to be prepared, right? Um, that's that's just basic survival. So um, take these time, you know, to, to buy buy some extra food, buy some extra supplies, some water. Um, you know, you want at least at least at a minimum seven days of water easily accessible in, in your house or wherever you are. Um, food, maybe not quite as much, but everybody should have something. So uh, this is a good chance to, a good time to reflect and be thankful that nothing did happen to our grid um, because that potential and that possibility is real. And if it happens today, I mean, imagine not being able to make a phone call today or check your email or for God's sakes, there's pretty much nothing you can't do anymore that's not digital. You can't buy gas, you can't, you can't do a lot of things, and this will paralyze a lot of people in their tracks. Uh, and I don't think most people have thought about what they would do in that situation. So it, it could catch a lot of people off guard. Um, so now's, now's a good time to reflect, be thankful, and plan ahead, because we may not be as lucky in the future. In fact, it's a good chance, a good probability that we will be hit with a CME that is, is going to be a direct kill. Um, lights out for everybody. So hopefully it doesn't happen, but history proves that it will. And there's not a lot we can do but to prepare ourselves now. So that's all I'm trying to say, guys. Thank you. Oh, and before we go, there was one other side note I wanted to mention. Um, I've been really paying attention all weekend the skies and there has been no contrails chemtrails whatever you want to call them but the skies this weekend have been blue where they appear I mean there's a lot of clouds but uh, you don't see a single trail in the sky a single airplane you know there's a lot of clouds right now but normally you see these trails everywhere so I don't know it's just a little weird nothing going on this weekend <laughs>